what's up welcome back to my channel and if you're new here i'm jason the creator of mr game and tech a place where you'll find the coolest tutorials and reviews on everything game and tech related if it's worth doing i'm here to show you how to do it in this video i'm going to show you how you too can unlock all the potentials of your playstation 3 by installing custom firmware the firmware you see running here is the latest firmware from developer rebug which is Rebug 4.85.1 Lite Cobra 8.2. I'm going to show you how I went from a stock PlayStation 3 running the original firmware 4.80 to this beautiful unlocked console that you see before you here. Alright, before we begin, a little disclaimer. I try my best to give instruction as clearly as possible. However, I'm not responsible if you damage your console or system while trying my tutorial. Also, I do not encourage or promote the sharing of illegal ROMs and games, so please do not ask. This information is for educational purposes only. So here we have a stock PS3. Um, this is a PS3 I picked up a little while ago. I um, haven't really put much use to it. Um, I think I even did a factory reset on it because I bought this from a GameStop used. If you take a look at the menus here, um, we're going to want to go to the system setting menu. And from there, we'll be able to determine what our current firmware version is. So we'll go into system settings. And if we scroll down, we'll be able to get to the system information menu. Oh, by the way, this is a PS3 Slim. And here, it'll let us know what our current firmware version is. So where it says System Software version 4.80, that is the current version of this PlayStation 3 that we have running here. We're going to be doing this jailbreak for version 4.85. As of the making of this video, 4.85 was the current version of the is the latest version of the PlayStation 3 firmware so you'll be able to do this jailbreak as long as your system uh, is one of the system that is compatible for this jailbreak and I'll go over that with you in a little bit here but for now um, we're gonna want to go ahead and get our system ready for a system update so that we can get on 4.85 which is the required firmware for this jailbreak to work. But before we do that, let's go on our PC real quick because we want to download a file that's going to allow us to check to make sure that our PlayStation had the low original firmware that's required in order to do this jailbreak. So I'll go ahead and I'll share the link below in the description but we'll come here to this website um, and we're going to download a file called minimumvercheck.pub um, this is a file that we will be loading onto our USB thumb drive um, and from there we'll pop it into our PS3 to check to see if our PlayStation meets the requirement for the jailbreak which is to have an original firmware below 3.54 um, so uh, once again I will be sharing the link to this website in our description uh, but uh, when you come here uh, it just gives you information about the file and what it does and what you're going to want to do is um, you can scroll towards the top here um, and you'll see a green download now button you'll want to click on that so that you can uh, get the file that we'll need for uh, the next part of this tutorial. Real quick, we're going to go to download.com so that we can get ourselves a 7Z extractor. Uh, if you notice, the file that you've just downloaded, minimum bird check, uh, it's compressed with the 7Z extension so the easiest way to uncompress that file is to go to download.com 
look for 7-zip. Um, once you uh, search for the file, go ahead and ignore that Best Buy ad there. I guess these trackers know that I love electronic and technology, so they're always trying to sell me stuff. But um, yeah, after you type in 7-zip, uh, you'll see 7-zip uh, and 7-zip 64-bit. Go ahead and click the one that works best for you. For me, I'm going to go ahead and click 7-zip 64-bit. And I'm going to download this file here. And after you download it, go ahead and install the program. Just follow through with the wizard. Um, I've already installed the program. Uh, I have it right here in my um, program already so I don't need to install it but go ahead and install it and then we'll continue with the next step so now that our file is finished downloading we'll go to our download folder and we'll find the minvercheck file here like I said it has a 7z extension so to open up this file we'll go ahead and we'll right click and we'll choose open with and from this list I already have 7-zip file manager showing however if you don't have that option yet go ahead and click on look for more programs you'll want to go to your program folders and then 7-zip and from there you'll pick 7ZFM for the 7-zip file manager and with that you'll be able to extract this file so go ahead and extract the file that you got there um, and it's going to give you a file called ps 3 updatpup um, If you want, go ahead and read this text file, which gives you information on how um, the file works uh, and what it does. Um, but we're going to go ahead and go through that together now. So essentially what it's telling you to do is uh, put in a thumb drive. So let me go ahead and grab my USB thumb drive here. Uh, and on the thumb drive, you'll want to make sure that you're formatted to FAT32. If for whatever reason you're not formatted to the FAT32 system file format, you can right click your thumb drive, go to format, and from here you can choose to format your thumb drive to FAT32. Um, and set the parameters that you want um, for this thumb drive that we'll be using for the PS3 hack. So I'm just going to call it PS3 exploit. Um, and yes, I'm going to go ahead and format it to the FAT32 system file that we selected here. And once that's complete, we can go ahead and start the process of jailbreaking our PS3. So we'll create a folder and we'll call this folder PS3. We'll go inside the folder and create another folder called update. And inside this update folder is where we're going to copy that minvercheck file that we extracted earlier. So. Uh, once you extract that file, there should be a ps3 up that file in that uh, um, minvercheck uh, compressed file. You'll grab that and throw it into this update folder that we created on your thumb drive. After that, we'll go ahead and we'll go back to our ps3 where we'll check out this file. Okay, so we're back on the ps3 here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and plug in my USB thumb drive um, and I'm going to try to do an update through the media storage you can see it found our minimum vercheck file so when we run this file we're going to want to make sure that the results show that we're under version 3.54 um, if your system is higher than 3.54 you will not be able to install the custom firmware so you'll have to find a different method but since our system was showing 3.50 which is under the 3.54 or lower requirement uh, we are able to move on to the next step 
which is to get our system updated to version 4.85 since this jailbreak is for version 4.85 um, and once we are on version 4.85 we'll be able to install the hybrid firmware um, and then uh, dump and write our flash memory um, and, and, and then ultimately put on a custom firmware but uh, we'll all get to that shortly here but for now we'll go ahead and do this update you can see that the current version shows 4.85 um, if you watch this video in the future and the uh, PlayStation 3 firmware is no longer 4.85 and it's a higher number however if you're under 4.85 I do not recommend that you use this method to update your PlayStation 3. It will update you past the firmware version uh, that will allow you to do this jailbreak. So I recommend that if you are below version 4.85 um, and um, when you try to update via the internet it shows a version higher than 4.85, go ahead and use the update via um, uh, external storage method where you download the 4.85 firmware off the internet throw it into your PS3 uh, update folder um, and then allow it to update offline using um, the uh, external storage method um, that we used earlier to run the min virtuek uh, file so we just finished doing our update um, I'll go ahead and I'll show you right now that the system uh, that was a 4.80 system has now been updated and we are on version 4.85 official firmware. So you can see there it shows 4.85, that is the official firmware. Now we're ready to begin the next step, which is to get on the PC and get some files ready so that we can update this uh, system with a hybrid firmware so we're just gonna hop back onto the PC and go on the internet um, I'll link you guys this page where we'll be able to download the hybrid firmware which is essentially a stepping stone that's gonna get us ultimately to custom firmware so up here you can see we have uh, our 4.85 flash writer uh, reference file um, and underneath there we have the 4.85 hybrid firmware uh, which is needed in order for us to get to the next step which is ultimately to get a custom firmware so go ahead and click on that link and download the file you can see I've already downloaded here I'll go ahead and now extract the contents of the file um, inside this um, file that we just downloaded will be a pup file um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, rename this file and uh, copy it to the upload update folder I should say uh, like we did earlier so uh, the file just finished extracting I'll go ahead and pull it over here so you guys can see it and we're gonna first go ahead and rename the file to ps3 updat.pub so we'll be removing the beginning prefix of this file here and then we're going to open up our flash drive to the ps3 to the update folder like we did earlier and we can go ahead and either overwrite the file if you still have it there the previous ps3 updat.pub that we used to check the minimum firmware version that our system had um, or um, you know if it's not in there uh, if you deleted it previously just go ahead and copy this file in here so that it's the only ps3 updat.pub file in the update folder within the ps3 folder on your flash drive so this file is just finishing up the copy um, we can go ahead and eject our thumb drive now um, and we can go ahead and plug our thumb drive back into the PlayStation 3 uh, so that we can do the update to the hybrid firmware. So back on the PS3 here, um, you can see I got my USB drive plugged in. Um, I'm going to go ahead, go to system update, and we're going to update.
update via the storage media again you can see that the hybrid firmware is showing when we uh, click on it 4.85 HSW so we'll go ahead and read through the user agreement and after that we can start our update So I'm just going to speed through the update process here with you guys in the background. Um, but typically this process should take anywhere from 5 to 10 minutes. Um, if it freeze or anything like that, you might want to uh, restart your PS3 um, and uh, just check your system information to see where you're at. So as long as the system update goes through okay it'll boot you back into your PlayStation uh, GUI your dashboard um, you can see here it's not actually gonna tell you that you're on a hybrid firmware you'll probably still see 4.85 uh, like you see here but um, as long as it went through okay just know that you should be on version 4.85 now so that we can actually start the next part which is to run the update again from the USB storage device the reason why you want to run the update twice is it's been reported in the forms for the jailbreak um, and from other users that um, files have been missing from the installation so just to make sure that everything gets installed uh, like it needs to be uh, you'll want to just go ahead and run the hybrid firmware update twice from the USB storage device Once we are done Running it two times we're next we're ready now for the next step uh, which is to go ahead and dump our current system um, data uh, I'm running a PS3 slim so I have a NOR device and so we're gonna go to the PlayStation 3 exploit website um, go ahead and access your PlayStation 3 browser and from there you're gonna want to click on file um, an address entry in the address bar the address you're going to want to type in is going to be <coughs> PS3Exploit XPLOIT dot com And once you get to the PlayStation 3 exploit website, you're going to want to bookmark this page uh, as your home page because you're going to be coming to it uh, for the next couple of steps here. Um, in addition to that, we're going to want to prepare our web browser for the hack. Um, I'll go over that in a little bit here, but essentially we want to make the web browser as lightweight as possible when it's time for us to execute the hack and I'm going to show you in a bit here what I mean by that but in the meantime right now what you want to do is set this as your home page um, and then go ahead and close out of the browser and then test it out reopen your browser um, if it takes you directly back to our PlayStation 3 exploit page then we are ready for the next step which is to get the browser as lightweight as possible so that when we run the hack we don't run into any issues um, and I'll show you what I mean here um, by running into some issues so we're gonna go through this portion first without making it lightweight so the next step here is to dump our system uh, information or system NOR so I'm going to go up to the top to our flash dumper and from here 
I'm gonna select dump nor to SD to USB I mean um, and then you'll get a warning to let you know that this requires the hybrid firmware it will not work on the original firmware so go ahead and hit OK um, if you keep the default settings which is the checkbox next to USB 000 um, then that's going to correspond to your furthest right USB slot on a PS3 Slim. So you got a left and a right USB uh, slot in the front of your PS3. This is going to be in reference to the right PS3 USB slot. So we'll go ahead and we'll click initialize application and um, I'm going to speed this up just a little bit in the background so that you're not waiting too long but this should take anywhere from 5 to 10 minutes and when it finishes this time you'll notice that the exploit has failed it recommends that you refresh the page uh, and to run it again but actually I'm going to re uh, I'm going to go ahead and suggest you to do something else Instead, we're going to go to the tools here and we're going to start deleting all of the things that makes the browser heavy. So that's going to be your cookies, your search history, your cache, and your authentication information. So go ahead and delete those four items, get them all cleared out. And after you do that, go ahead and close the web browser and then reopen it up again and then try your dump now. Um, if you go ahead and you clear out those information that was stored in the web browser, um, it should enable you now to do a proper dump of your system NOR, of your system flash. So uh, I got those pages bookmarked so I can quickly jump to them. Um, if you notice now when I initialize it, it um, initialized successfully and now we can continue and proceed to dumping or nor flash memory to the USB drive um, so this process is going to take anywhere from 5 to 15 minutes uh, we'll go ahead and speed this up in the background so that we can get past this you can see that the dump was successful um, what you'll want to do now after getting a successful dump is you'll want to go ahead and close your PS3 browser um, and then safely eject your USB flash drive from your PS3 and <clears throat> we're going to continue the next step on the computer uh, where you'll plug that USB drive onto your computer so let's go ahead and head over to our PC again so back on our PC we'll go ahead and we'll plug in our USB drive you can see that's the file that was dumped. That's your flash NOR, your system flash that we've dumped. We're going to go ahead and make a copy of that file. And we're going to create a new folder on our desktop here. Um, you can't see it in my background, but we can click to it. Uh, here's my new folder. I'm going to go ahead and rename this folder PS3 Flash Backup. So. I'm going to go ahead and paste our dump file into here so that I can keep this for safekeeping. Um, just in case anything goes wrong during our custom firmware upgrade or uh, if for whatever other reason we want to return back to our original firmware, um, this is uh, the most surefire way to get that accomplished. So don't skip out on this part. Make sure you back up your original dump file um, so that if anything goes wrong, you can always go back to it. So after that, we'll go ahead and we'll download the hex file, um, the flash uh, 4.85 hex file, which we'll use to uh, flash write uh, to our firmware to enable <coughs> The exploit to work on version 4.85 um, so that we can write our custom firmware to 4.85 
So one of the things I like doing is confirming that the file that we download is um, not corrupted. One way of doing that is checking the hash against the file. You can go here to onlinemd.com uh, online um, and throw the file that you just downloaded onto this website and then you can check against the hash that I have here in the description to make sure that the file did not get corrupted when you download it because the last thing you want to do is use this file that's corrupted to write to your PS3 firmware. So uh, important step, make sure that you check that flash underscore 4.85.hex file against a MD5 hash checker to make sure the file is complete. So now that I have it there, I'm going to go ahead and copy that file into the root of my PS3 thumb drive that I've been using. Um, after we copy that file to the root of the PS of the thumb drive, we can eject the thumb drive and we can go ahead and start the next step on our PS3. Alright, so back on the PS3, we're going to want to go ahead and open up the web browser again after confirming that our flash drive is in the USB slot, in the rightmost USB slot. Once we get back on the web browser, we're going to go to the flash, the PS3 North Flasher page. Um, and once we get here, we'll make sure that the USB 000 uh, box is checked, uh, so it's the first one. And after that, we'll go ahead and click Initialize Exploitation. I'll go ahead and I'll try to speed up this process here in the background. Alright, and our Norflash memory patch has completed. What what they suggest that we do now is dump the current patched NOR and run that patched NOR against the utility to make sure that it's been successfully patched. So that's what we're going to do next here. We're going to go back to the page for the flash dumper um, and we're going to dump the current uh, flash memory that's been patched already so that we can check that dump file against the utility to confirm if our dump or if our patch was successful. So I'm going to go back to our dumper page here and just like before have your USB uh, in the far right slot uh, have the USB 000 box selected and go ahead and initialize the exploitation for the dumper um, we'll speed this up in the background here and after the initialization is complete go ahead and dump your uh, patch NOR to the USB flash drive um, and then once we have this patch uh, flash memory dump we'll go ahead and we'll go back onto our PC where we'll store it so our patch flash has completed uh, dumping onto our flash drive so we'll go ahead and we'll close out the browser right now and we'll safely eject our USB thumb drive and uh, go ahead and go back onto the computer uh, back on the computer we'll go ahead and we'll grab the dump patch file and we'll throw it into our backup folder for our uh, flash backup and we'll rename this one patched PS3 flash backup or whatever you want to call it so we'll go ahead and we'll make a copy of this file here and what we're going to want to do is we want to make sure that our flash memory was patched correctly the way that we do that is there is a utility um, that's a checker that we can use to check to make sure that our firmware was uh, patched properly. So you go to this website, I'll go ahead and I'll give you the link, and then we're going to look up Py, uh, Python PS3 tools. And we'll click on the download button here on the right and choose to download the zip. Um, once you've downloaded 
the zip file here we'll extract it and inside of it there should be a pi ps3 checker and that's what we need to extract but since this is a python program we're not going to be able to just run it uh, right out the box we're going to need to go to the python website first so that's python.org and when we come to the python.org website we'll click on windows and they have two types of python available there's a python 3 and a python 2 we're going to want to click on the latest version for python 2 which uh, this time was 2.7.17 once you click on it uh, you'll have a couple of different options you'll want to scroll to where it says windows x86-64 msi installer that's the one that you're going to want to download uh, to run uh, so that we can get Python running on your Windows machine. Uh, once we have Python installed, then we'll be able to use that Pi PS3 checker utility that we downloaded a moment ago. So now that we've got Python installed, um, we just simply go to our folder that we extracted the Pi PS3 checker to. And in this folder, we'll go ahead and we'll place our patch uh, flash backup in here so I'll grab that file make a copy of it and then I'm going to go back into my Pi PS3 checker folder paste it in here and once it's in here uh, all you have to do is grab the file and drop it to this batch file right here the one that says drop file here and as soon as you drop it um, you might have to allow this since, you know, um, your Defender program might think it's some kind of uh, mischievous um, application, but it's safe, uh, trust me. Um, what it'll do is it'll run through a batch and check your files to make sure that there is no issue with your patch um, flash backup. So... Um, it just finished. What you want to do is look at this portion of the log right here. You'll see the number of checks that it's done, the number of danger or warning that it shows. Uh, the most important things would be the danger. You want to make sure you don't have zero. You don't have any danger. It should say zero danger. If you see some warnings, uh, that might be okay to skip over, depending on what kind of warnings they are. But ultimately, you don't want to have any danger or any warnings. If you do, um, you might have to restore your original firmware and then start this whole process over again. But let's keep our finger crossed and hope that that's not necessary. Um, in our case here, uh, we had zero danger, zero warning. So we are safe to go ahead and move on with the next step of this jailbreak. So the next step would be to go ahead and delete this file. We no longer need it. We'll go ahead and go into the PS3 update folder. And now that we know that our firmware is safe to go, we can uh, get the custom firmware um, ready so that we can get to our final result or final product, which is a customized PS3 system. So you'll go back to the PS3. X place uh, website uh, that I have in the description and you'll click on the tab that says CFW for custom firmware there's currently only three custom firmware that is available for firmware 4.85 so we're gonna go with the rebug light custom firmware I click on the link if you scroll down towards the um, bottom there'll be a another forwarding link there that'll take you to their rebug developer website when you get here you'll want to scroll all the way down to the bottom um, where the downloads are and once you get to the very bottom you'll see the download link for the custom firmware um, the current custom firmware that's available for 4.85 um, and then when you click on it um, it actually is a zip file that stores another link to where the custom firmware actually resides. 
So I went ahead and took the liberty of pasting the link right there in the video for you to see. I'll, it'll also be in my description in the bottom um, in the bottom of my video. But uh, yeah, you can go ahead and skip this whole part and go to that link there to download the custom firmware that we'll be using um, to jailbreak our PS3 and finish up this um, jailbreaking process. So I went ahead and I clicked on the and I pasted in the link that I found in the zip file and I downloaded the custom firmware update. We're going to go ahead and rename this file just like we did uh, with the previous hybrid firmware and call it ps 3 updatpub and what we'll do is we'll copy this file into our update folder that we've been using on our thumb drive. So uh, inside the PS3 folder, inside the update folder, we'll go ahead and we'll put our custom firmware. And once it's in there, we can go ahead and eject our thumb drive and we can go ahead and close out of our file browser and we'll go back into the PS3 to finish up this custom firmware installation. Back on the PS3, put your thumb drive in, go ahead and click on system update and you'll want to go ahead and update via uh, storage media. You'll see that the firmware is 4.81 Rebug Lite Edition. Go ahead and read through the uh, user agreement and once you're ready, go ahead and click start. There's no turning back now. So this is going to go through the process of installing the custom firmware over the hybrid firmware that you previously installed. I know we had some extra steps in between, but those steps were for safeguarding you in case any hiccups or any unexpected behavior occurs after performing this jailbreak. So um, that was essentially backing up your flash memory um, and then checking uh, to make sure that our patch flash memory that we're going to be using so that we can install this custom firmware here um, is good to go without any danger or warning. So since we had zero danger and zero warning, we were safe to proceed ahead. And now that we've installed it, you can see that we are on custom firmware rebug. Isn't that beautiful? You can tell that this is a different theme by the red PlayStation symbol and icon. In addition to that, we got custom firmware tools available to us. And we also got the package manager, which is most important for home brewing and installing additional things on our jailbroken PS3. Well, that's all I have for you guys in this YouTube video. Catch my next one where I show you how to start customizing your PS3 and other goodies. If you like this video and you want me to continue making more for you, please give this video a like, a thumbs up, a share to your friends and family. And don't forget, please subscribe to my channel because it really helps me so I can continue to create more content for you all. Tell me what you think of this video in the comments and tell me how I can improve myself for you guys next time around. So until next time, this is your boy, Jason, from Mr. Gaming Tech, signing off. Keep gaming on, guys. Peace.